The learning journey in association with Turn It Up Tuesday hosted by Ross Audio presents Did You Know? This week we will use newspapers from the 1800s to the 1900s to establish the perspective of Obia during this period. Obio and the Caribbean Connection using, of course, archive newspapers. Before moving on, let us define what is Obia. According to one writer, Obia is not to be confused with voodoo. Obia has no creed or organized service of worship. The word Obi is from Africa and is connected to sorcery and Egyptian mythology. Historical stories about Obio seem to be connected to the wide perspectives. The reality is, back in slavery, Obio represented a hope and revenge for many enslaved people. The plantation owners could not handle Obia. Obia was a form of resistance and in many situations an enslaved person would drop a secret portion into Massa's food to take revenge. Obia is a word that is frequently used out of context. For example, while playing football in Jamaica, we called a feared defender Obia D. Not because he was an Obia man, but just because it sounded good. So the connection to the word Obia can be found in many discussions and naming of people in Jamaica. But let's get back down to the history of Obia as it relates to the newspapers. As early as 1895, the Caribbean people would begin to make impact in the United States as it relates to Obia. According to one professor, the arrival of Caribbean servants created problems. It seems that Samuel Perez had brought back his two servants from the Caribbean, which included a male and a female. Things did not go well when it was discovered that the female was teaching the children and other servants how to meditate and also palm reading. According to the professor, they would go down on their knees and hands on the tables and chairs and speak in language that could not be understood by the normal person. Around the same time, there would be a multitude of individuals in Jamaica claiming that someone had walked all beyond them or worked obia on them. Even the courts would become part of the obia stories. Judges had to understand the cultural context of obia. Based on street talk in the Caribbean, many people will view the issue of human sacrifice as an emerging trend. However, on November the 1st, 1899, a sensational story was published in the New York Times. According to the Times, and I quote, a Negro in Dominica was charged for murdering a child. The Times was not sure if it was an act of voodoo or obia, but seemed to credit both voodoo and obia. The Attorney General back then stated that the child had been a victim of barbaric superstition on the island. In 1902, the New York Times published another segment on obia titled The Obia Ban in Jamaica. The article goes on to further suggest that after emancipation, the obia man was allowed to practice. Far from the truth because it was still illegal back then. The Times described the man as a sinister and terrifying figure who was deceitful. The Times also had a nerve to suggest that the obia man would do anything for a bottle of rum or a few shillings. Boy oh boy, the Times is somewhat disrespectful here. I am sure that today's obia men or women operate using US dollars and not rum. However, according to the Times, to reach this man, you had to walk on a trackless mountain top in Jamaica. In 1972, the New York Times did another piece titled, Obia is a phase of life and afterlife in the Caribbean. The newspaper highlighted one 18-year-old girl from Barbados who saw an image of her grandmother in the window. She rushes out to see her grandmother, but realizes she's not there. Meanwhile, in Jamaica, a woman warns her husband not to ill-treat her son if he remarries. She dies, and he remarries. However, it is noticeable that she shows up every night at the front gate. The fishermen also notice this woman in the area. The woman stops coming once the man tells the new wife his expectations of how the son should be treated. In Guyana that same year, a black chicken is placed under a corpse to be buried. The chicken has a paper that is tied to the leg. When the chicken emerges with the names, the mourners flee. Those whose names are on it 
are the ones expected to die. Yes, we talk about Obia, but we must understand that Obia was made illegal after the Taki Rebellion. One guest writer for the Gleaner suggested that Obia was designed in racism. She goes on to say that until the 1950s, people were regularly arrested for Obia. For example, take the case of Zachariah Carr. A man came to him seeking help, and he stated he could help the man. Zachariah gave the man a bottle of salted water, lit a few lamps, spoke in a foreign language, and took a few shillings from the man. During his court hearing, the judge said that he was practicing Obia. The unknown language that Zachariah spoke was classified as supernatural, and the salted water was said to be an instrument of Obia. And of course, the money was classified as proceedings from Obia. Poor Zachariah was sentenced to nine months for selling salted water. I came across the concept of Obia tourism. Obia seemed to have gone international. According to the Gleaner Report, published on November the 23rd, 2011, Obia tourism is big business and many people are coming from abroad to seek the best Obia men and women in Jamaica. The report cites one woman and her son coming from abroad to get assistance. The son came to get help for his substance abuse. After receiving treatment from the Obia man, the son was now free from the duppy of drug addiction that was set upon him by others. I would like to end on a serious note. A few years ago, I was a victim support coordinator for St. James in Jamaica. The job allowed me to support victims of crimes. One case that I had to support was a young lady who was abused during a house break-in. During the trial, the woman broke down on the stand during her testimony. She was traumatized. The court had to adjourn for that day, and I was asked by the court to speak to the young lady. I journeyed to Norwood in St. James, where I would talk to the young lady and her father. The father stated that his daughter would not be returning to court to continue her testimony. He stated that the reason for her breaking down yesterday was because someone had obey her. The next day I was called to the courthouse by the police. The accused was in attendance, but the victim, as promised, did not show up. I was asked to take the stand and under oath, I told the court that the father and daughter would not be returning because of the fear of obia. The fear of obia by the victims may have set the alleged accused free. He was able to walk out of court that day. My final thoughts are that Obia continues to play a significant role in the Caribbean. So significant that adults and school children are getting involved with deadly consequences. But let us not forget that Obia also played a role in the survival of our ancestors. Our ancestors did not intend for their practices to be used to destroy fellow brothers and sisters. What are your thoughts on Obia? Who or what has informed your thoughts? As you consider these questions, remember Obia was used as a form of resistance against the oppressors. Over to you, Rossi.